While cooking breakfast the other day, I wondered, what if pancakes were monsters that hunted and ate waffles? You know, normal breakfast thoughts. To find out, let's start with a circle of wire covered in aluminum foil. This will then get covered in a thinnish layer of clay. I was out of my Super Sculpey, so today I'm just using mystery clay that was in a Ziploc bag in my closet. I have no idea how it got there, or how long it's been there, but it seems okay, so we're using it. I'll start by carving out a space for the mouth, and then I'll cover the whole thing with cling film, and then get started on pancake texture. I made a few batches for research, and noticed that each pancake had little dents and divots where the dough wasn't as caramelized as the outermost layers. My plan is to replicate that here as best as I can by making little swirlies with my ball stylus, and hoping that dry brushing will save me when I get to painting. The bubbly, fluffy pancake sides will get stabbed with a ball stylus, as well as a pokey needle tool that will give you free red paint if you're not too careful. Then, while the pancake is baking, I'll make some blueberry eyeballs. I decided to make only half the blueberries I needed, and then cut them in half, which made my life so much easier. I then attached each eye to the pancake with some liquid Sculpey, and then built up the dough around each eyeball. I figured that the dough around the blueberries would be a little bit less cooked, so I textured the lids similarly to the size of the pancakes, and then got started on the pancake lips. This mostly consisted of building up some big ropes of clay around the mouth, and then blending it into the surrounding clay. I'll use some liquid clay to give our pancakes some cracked, gnarly lips, and then start adding the teeth. I actually made these teeth weeks ago, just in case I'd need them, and that just goes to show. Always keep a jar of loose teeth in your cupboard. It was a bit difficult to fit the teeth into the mouth with the big ropes of pre-baked flesh I put in the way, but I'm sure these big mouth noodles are permanent, making the extra effort completely worth it. I'll attach a few more of these fleshy strips to the sides of the mouth, and then we can eyeball blueberryfy the backside. After some contemplation, I decided that I actually hated these flesh strips, so I took them all out. But now the sculpting is finished, and we can start painting! I'll first cover the whole pancake with a base coat the color of uncooked dough. And then while that is drying, I'll give the mouth a layer of fleshy pink. I probably should have waited until I was done with dry brushing, but hindsight is 2020, and I'm painting the eyeballs now. Each blueberry gets a coat of blue that will inevitably have to be touched up later after my willy-nilly dry brushing. I'll make each iris a lighter shade of blue, and then add some details with pale green and gray. Each pupil will get pupillified, and then we'll get back to making the mouth extra gross with a series of washes. I struggled a bit to get the right fleshy color, especially since I started with such a vibrant pink as the base. But with some reds, browns, purples, and blacks, I was able to get to a place where I was decently happy, enough so that I could paint the teeth white and call the mouth temporarily okay. I'll have to go over these teeth again with a white that's a little less blank later on, but for now, that doesn't look half bad. Then comes the dry brushing. Thankfully, my texturing in the beginning paid off, and I was able to get the caramelization only on the raised parts of the pancake, leaving the innermost areas less cooked. I'll give the pancake surface two different colors of dry brushing, and then the outer edges and around the eyes will get a slightly different shade, just to help give the impression that they're a little bit less cooked and crispy. Then we'll shake all that paint onto the back of the sculpture, and then let's return to mouth time. We'll just add a few more washes until I'm happy, dabbing away the excess with a Q-tip, and then I'll repaint the teeth a bone white, making sure to break one on camera and two more off camera. Next I'll give each blueberry a coat of UV resin to make them all look nice and shiny. And then I'll do the same with the mouth, partly for the wet effect, but mostly to strengthen the teeth that keep breaking. To finish up the mouth, I'll use some Fabri-Tac glue to add some slobbery strands. Then we can get started on making bacon. 
The bacon will be the arms and legs of our pancake, so I'll give them a sturdy armature. I'll briefly shape them with my fingers and then start using more liquid Sculpey. Paint adheres less easily to liquid Sculpey, so I'm hoping to use this to my advantage. After a quick bake, I can add some paint, and then I'll dab it away with a paper towel to reveal semi-transparent globules of fat. I'll negate some of the fun of this with too many layers of washes, and then some attempts to add fat streaks that didn't quite pan out. I had no idea what I was doing, but it turned out good enough, and for some monster pancake with bacon limbs, that's just fine with me. One of the limbs will be grasping a fork, but instead of using an actual fork, I'm just going to make my own. And after some silver paint, my homemade fork is virtually indistinguishable from the real thing. The fork gets fitted into a bacon hand, and that's the pancake done. Now it's time to make our monster some food. To make my little waffles, I'll first make a waffle press that I can use to make semi-uniform waffles. Once I have two matching sides, I can add some facial features, wire for the arms and legs, and then cut off the excess clay and pinch the two halves together. One of my waffles will be running away while the other is being speared by a fork, and the third lies dead in a puddle of syrup and butter. Since the waffles are running away from the pancake, I figured I should give them humanoid limbs because, well, why not? This means toes and fingers, and I'm not exactly adept at toes or fingers, so I'll do the best I can for now and then I'll let future me worry about practicing more so that my future sculptures won't look quite so... Ugh. Now each waffle gets a cute little butter hat, and that's all three waffles sculpted and ready for painting. The painting process will follow much the same as the pancake, a base layer of raw dough followed by a freshly cooked dry brushing to bring out all that texture in the waffle. I decided that the waffles would have sausage limbs instead of bacon, so I'll paint those a little bit more brown than red. Then the insides of the mouths get a cheerful pink, and I'll touch up any wounds with a few different reds which will get muted with maple syrup later on. I'll paint each eye blue and green, and then tint the edges with a red wash to make them look extra bloodshot. A quick dry brushing of the limbs will bring out some of those edges, and then I'll paint the toenails a truly awful shade of yellow. One of the waffles will be holding a little strawberry on a vine. I'm hoping the vine will give a sense of movement while the waffle is being speared, and that the strawberry will add some intrigue, sparking questions like, why? The strawberry will get a shiny coat of UV resin, and then some little green leaves before getting threaded through the hands of the waffle and glued into position. To finish the sculpture, I'll permanently borrow a plate from my kitchen and attach the bacon legs. then the pancake, and then the supporting arm. I'll skewer the waffle with the fork, and then attach the second bacon arm to the pancake. The last two waffles will find their place on the plate, and then we'll play with even more UV resin to add the melting butter hats, and then genuine real maple syrup on the fork, and the wounds on the dead waffle. Then, as a final touch, I'll use a pipette to pump some syrup into the mouth of our monster pancake. The UV light will harden the resin as it drips down, creating permanent flowing drool. And with that, we're all finished!
watching this weird little video. I'm horrified and, if I'm being honest, a little hungry too. I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time.